I would say, you know, it, it's amazing. This is something we were hoping for uh, for a long, long time. I would say that both, you know, as representing Space AL, but also uh, Israel in general, uh, you know, taking this peace agreement to practical projects and practical uh, uh, things that we can do together, both as engineers and scientists and in the education world. Uh, you know, in the beginning, when we started Bereshit 2, we were hoping that this project will be able to unite many countries around the world and, and to get many children, millions of children around the world to work together and be part of the science. And now it's happening uh, with, this, uh, with this agreement. Uh, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done, both on, on the project uh, itself and also in making this, uh, in this partnership uh, active. Uh, but uh, this is the first step. Uh, hopefully of uh, many others and many and, and I hope that many other countries will also join us now and uh, and that will all uh, that will be able to go together and uh, everyone uh, back to the moon. as I mentioned at the at the top of the show here it sends a message of peace and friendship not just to this world but to other worlds as well you know in, in outer space what hopefully could this accomplish I mean could we see uh, Emirati engineers working closely with Israeli engineers on the design? Will there be a satellite? Will there be flags? Explain what you hope the partnership could actually look like. So we are working on the details. Um, one option, as you said, is, uh, is having the, the engineers work together, but a big focus is on the scientific payloads to see what we can do together. Bereshit is going to take Three, uh, three different payloads or at least three spacecraft. Each one will take at least one, but maybe even more. So we are looking into the possibility that uh, uh, scientists for the, from the Emirates will join our scientific team and actually you know, be part both with defining and selecting and building those payloads and later on uh, researching uh, with all the information that we'll receive. Uh, but also we're looking at the, the possibility that, as I said, the young children, both from Israel and from the Emirates, will be able to work together to get information that uh, is being received from the moon and conduct research together. So a few of the scientific payloads we are going to put on the spacecraft uh, are aimed not just for scientists, but we're looking at a specific uh, sensors that also children will be able to uh, to learn and investigate and analyze. And so uh, we're hoping that you know it won't be just engineers or scientists. It will also be children that will be able to work together and start building those relations from a really young age. Fear the Bereshit One mission. It was both inspiring and wonderful, and also at the end heartbreaking. A little bit. Can you tell me kind of what lessons you learned, what the team learned from from that uh, that will help you with Bereshit 2's mission? So I will say that uh, we've learned a lot, uh, you know, after uh, the mission and, you know, should be noted, we reached the moon, not as expected, but, uh, you know, we were able to, to do uh, to, to achieve uh, reaching the moon and also having a big uh, inspirational work here on Earth. But I will say that we investigated both the reasons for the crash and also when our new CEO, uh, Shimon Sarid, uh, started, uh, he made us investigate eight and a half years back. So we have a lot, a lot of insight on what we should do exactly the same and what we should change. And just presenting those, uh, those notes took us two days. And so, you know, both from a practical perspective and engineering perspective, there are a lot of things we know that we need to, uh, that we want to do differently. But I think that looking back at Bereshit 1, we're able to achieve so many things with a really lean budget. And, uh, you know, this is something that we also learned from on how to do that again in Bereshit 2. Should I should mention again that in Bereshit 2, we are not sending one spacecraft, we're sending three spacecraft two lenders to land on two different locations of the moon, and one is the orbiter that will keep orbiting and be the platform, both for the science and the education. Um, so, Kfir, will, you know, the we decided... to, will the Emiratis, I mean, you announced Space IL, you know, $70 million from investors, an incredible achievement. With this plan in mind, you know, a mothership and two landers, will the UAE also be contributing funding or financing? Can it help also make, you know, secure the, the spaceship even more? 
So first of all, yes, we, we've, uh, we're able to secure uh, 70 million from donors, uh, including uh, the Dairy family and Maurice Khan and, uh, and the Moshal family. Uh, and with their amazing support, we're able to start this journey. But I will say that the focus with the Emiratis is uh, not the, for the funding, it's really to create those bonds between our countries and uh, to look at it as an opportunity to, uh, to connect scientists, to connect kids, to connect, uh, to connect us as, uh, as two nations uh, together. Uh, we were hoping to do that, and, and now it's happening. Incredible moment. I mean, really, that this is now a partnership with the UAE and a friendship going out of this world into the moon. Thank you so much, Kfir, for being with us. Of course, we wish you luck and success as you continue to develop the game plan for the Bearer Sheet 2 mission. Thanks for spending some time with us on I-24 News. Thank you.